Welcome to another installment of Building Servants. Today we have Baiji Blasumbra from The Blood Princess and the Knight. As a servant, they would probably identify as genderless or swap between male and female based on the form. They would probably be an apostle, level fighter, comparing to that of a successor because they are the princess who would eventually succeed their mother, the queen, or just straight up ancestor tier because they eventually did become the queen after obtaining their ancestors power making them stronger than the previous queen. Now they could also be any other variation of vampire as long as they've been converted into it. In terms of classes they qualify for ruler, lancer because of the scythe that they use if Medusa lancer is anything to go by. As the queen having inherited their ancestors power they have a variety of spells making them a good caster and as a human they would be a saber. In terms of their abilities as the humanoid male form Jibai, the former knight lord and strongest knight at the time, they would have access to a fairly powerful sword, have its own will after getting upgraded into the blood spirit or vampire buster which they can only use in their humanoid form post upgrade for obvious reasons. They would have pretty high defense I feel being able to dawn upon their armor as the former Night Lord, not having any of their skills diminished, making them an overall balanced and very useful fighter. Now they could also just strip off the armor and fight just as well, tapping into their vampiric powers while in humanoid form, drawing upon more power temporarily, considering they've only used this technique once in the story so far. Another ability that they've shown is that if they focus, they're able to see things that are normally unseeable and with their sword intent, which would basically translate over to something like a short hit, they could cut almost anything that gets in their way. This ability was actually shown when they were taught it by the spirit of their sword that showed them how to cut a variety of puppets that were in their way by cutting their cores so they couldn't get back up. Later on, they get the ink staff, which gives them access to magic like healing and even reviving others to a certain extent. They're also shown to be able to put spirits into the staff itself as well as alter the appearances of those that she blesses after getting the inheritance but she could potentially do this before that. And on top of that she has a familiar who is a lightning dragon. Now as a blood spirit or vampire for simple terms she should be capable of having unlimited power and immortality, probably only being held back by a lack of experience. Having her scythe flight generation via blood consumption and her proof of authority through showing her blood bats which also appear when she breaks down her body to fast travel from one location to another. Her part of form only makes these things better. But on top of that, she was able to summon the first summon we ever see her do. She can now utilize that as a form of armor to cover her body. Although only briefly used, so we don't know what this is fully capable of, this is another buff. Having obtained her ancestor's power, she has omniscience and omnipotence, giving her four eras of intelligence and access to multiple abilities such as dragon protection, which is a protective barrier, elven divine spells, which in this case would translate to fairy magic, most likely since elves are fairies. In the battle before becoming the queen, she also showed more abilities like being able to summon glacial spears, rain down swords, create torrents, control the earth, do multiple types of summons, and even use the awakened spell Greedy Devourer, which even when absorbed by her foe, damaged them from the inside, and has the ability to create a domain, aka in this case, a reality marble, cutting off her opponent's ability to access power, as well as being able to use her opponent's magic on top of changing her weapon into something like a bow, for example. Now, as a character, which I go more into on their own video, even after becoming a vampire, they held on to their humanity as Chibai, looking at their vampiric side as a separate 
person. Thus, depending on the form that they would take, they prefer to be called by the proper name of Bai Ji or Ji Bai. The form that they take will also give them separate abilities, which will make them useful for multiple situations depending on the situation. With of course, the stronger form being the inherited queen one. Now, keep in mind that in the story, because the vampire form is their current base, if they don't have enough energy to maintain the human form, they just revert back to being a vampire and even go out of control trying to find any form of blood to sustain them. Thank you for watching this video if you've gotten this far. If you're interested more in this character, like I've said, check out the video on the screen right now or in the card. And who knows, I may have a video planned around this character for the future.